What's cracking, guys? This is Bruce here, your host show, Metric Scout Fantasy Football, and I did another mock draft that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. This one's a little different. As you know, I've been doing different mock drafts just to give you guys different looks. This one came to me. I did not come to it. I was on Twitter, got a notification to make a pick for a draft. I made the pick, and what it was, it was a mock draft on Twitter. One guy started a draft. It was Nick Pentakoff, and he made his pick, tagged somebody, and that person made their pick, then they tagged somebody, and it went down the line as a little chain, and we did two rounds. Each person got to make a pick, and I got the pick in the latter part of the second round, I think the 206 spot, but I gathered the results of that draft, and I'm going to share it with you guys today, and I think this is a good look of the draft because you're getting different perspectives from different people. One thing to know on this draft is it is hard to look through the, the draft and see who's been selected. So I, I imagine if some people were on the clock, it was hard for them to figure out who to take or not, especially if they're busy at the moment. But still, in the moment, on the top of your head, you get to forecast your true values at that forgiven moment as well. So again, this is something to look at, another mock draft for us to analyze here. For you guys to look at, for you guys to see how these players are falling off the boards, and this will go along the line with all the other mock drafts on this channel. With that being said, let's dig into the mock draft. Time to start with the first pick of this mock draft. This draft was started by Nick Pentakoff. He's the guy who made the first round pick. Here, he selected Sam Howe. Sam Howe, quarterback, it's super flex. I didn't mention that in the beginning of this, but it is a super flex draft. Going QB heavy is routine in super flex drafts, so it makes sense. Howe looked good during his first three years at North Carolina, looked good during his freshman season, and was productive throughout his career at the Senior Bowl. He did do some nice things. It showcased his mobility. He was off and on, but he was able to pinpoint the ball a little bit. He rushed for 852 yards this year. He's not a Konami code guy, but... He can scramble, he can pick up some yards when the play breaks down. That's going to increase his rushing production fantasy. Let's move on to the 102 pick in this draft. And here, they selected Traylon Burks. The person who made the selection was Logan Dixon. Burks is arguably the, the best wide receiver in his class. It's really between him and Garrett Wilson when you gauge the masses here. He has a 41.15% market share of Arkansas's passing production this season 3.57 yards per out run those are high end numbers there 9.3 yards after the catch per reception a lot of people are comparing him to josh gordon aj brown pretty much a lock to be a first round pick really high end prospect here in fantasy football circles moving on to the 103 pick here third player off the board they selected kenny pickett quarterback from Pitt, and this was selected by Bo, just straight up Bo. But Pickett is going to get first-round draft capital. He's going to be one of the first quarterbacks selected, probably the second or third one. I'm guessing Matt Corral and Malik Willis will probably go ahead of him, gauging the thermometer from the Senior Bowl this week. But Kenny Pickett could sneak up there as well. A lot of people have been talking him up throughout draft season. 4,319 yards, 42 touchdowns this year showed some rushing production and again he's not a Konami code quarterback but he can scramble he can pick up some rushing yards and he's a quarterback so he's going to have an influx in value here in super flex formats moving on to the 104 the next player off the board is Isaiah Spiller he was drafted by Jeff Mueller Spiller rushed for over a thousand yards six touchdowns average 3.63 yards after contact per attempt he is expected to be one of the first running backs off the board we're pegging him with second round draft capital on the mock draft database website. On average, he's being drafted somewhere between the mid 40 to mid 50 range in drafts. So make him a lock to be in the second round. Good draft capital means that you're more than likely going to get opportunities early in his career. He's got the size to be a three down back, shown some receiving chops. And with that being said, he's a good guy to take early on in rookie drafts. Moving on to the 105 spot here, they drafted Garrett Wilson. This pick was made by Kevin the Boys 22. I like this pick. I'm a high state guy. I'm also a big Garrett Wilson advocate. Liked him coming out of high school. 
24.16% market share of the team's passing production. He was in the 30s the year prior, sharing the offense with Jackson Smith, Jigba, Chris Olave, still hitting that 20% range, almost to 25 in market share. Is very good when you're running with those horses. Three yards per route run this year. 417 yards after the catch. Again, those are good numbers considering you're sharing the field with some very good wide receivers. Moving on to the 106 pick. Here we selected Brees Hall. This pick was made by Nate Christian. I like this pick. I have him as one of my top running backs in this draft. I have him as my 1A, 1B in that first tier with him and Spiller. If you remember the running back rankings, if not, check the archives. Rushed for 3,941 yards on his career and 50 touchdowns. This year he averaged 2.83 yards after contact per attempt. And I feel like the draft capital is going to be there. I know the draft capital is going to be there. I know he's going to be at least a second round pick. I know he's going to be selected high, which forecasts opportunity for him in the future with his next team. They're at least going to give him the opportunity to succeed or fail which is all you can really ask for for a running back, especially of his caliber. And if he takes advantage of his opportunities, he could be an RB1 in fantasy sooner than what we think. Going on to the 107 pick here, we selected Drake London. This pick was made by Garrett Price from the Dynasty Nerds. Drake London's one of my favorite wide receivers in this draft. I feel like he's being slept on a little bit, mainly due to the ankle injury. Mainly a lot of people just want to talk about Traylon Burks all day on Twitter. You hear that a lot. They also want to talk about Garrett Wilson, and then they want to talk about their favorite sleepers. But those upper echelon guys that are a little step below in the rankings, they don't get mentioned enough. Drake London had a 30.28% market share of USC's passing production this year. He is good at the catch point, and he is very fluid in his movement, considering how big he is. I like how he can break off routes. He can sell his routes a little bit. And he has nice, swift, nimble I think this was a great selection, and I feel like, I, I pretty much know, I feel like it's a good bet that he's going to be a first-round pick in the draft this year. Moving on to the 108, another wide receiver went off the board, and it was Jamison Williams, and this pick was made by Jared Wackerly from the Dynasty Nerds, Jay Wack. Uh, I like Williams as well, I just did a prospect profile on him, had a 31 0.94% market share of Alabama's passing production. I like Williams because he can hit that top speed like that off the rip. Has high-end speed for days. This dude's got speed to burn. Outrun guys who has the angle on him. We've seen that happen multiple times. And on top of that, I like that he had the self-awareness to just leave Ohio State not pick a jabroni school where he'd just easily be the guy, go to Alabama, compete, earn a spot, and then straight dominate, come in there and do well. I'm not concerned about the ACL. ACLs are myths these days. People come back from those like hiccups. So Jamison Williams is good to go. Let's move on to the 108 here in the draft. And here we are selecting George Pickens, and this pick was made by my dude Nick Whalen. I've known him for years, good guy, and I like this pick. I like George Pickens a lot. I think he's got a lot of upside. I, I really do. If it wasn't for the ACL that he came back from this year and then was able to make some plays, we're talking him up with some of these top guys in this draft. Again, broke out at age 18. There's only like three or four wide receivers this year that broke out at age 18. And that year he had a 23.29% mark share of Georgia's passing production, followed by another season of 20.53% market share of the team's passing production. That was in 2020, the weird COVID year. Uh, made big catches in the national title game. He came back. He came back. He could have just not come back and just got ready for the draft, but he came back. That just shows you he's got a little bit of dog in him. That shows you he wants to prove himself. There's some good things on tape, but overall, George Pickens is a great selection here. Let's move on to the 110. The 10th player off the board here was Chris Olave, and this is from BZ, the BZ BFF 
from Twitter. And I like Chris Olave. Obviously, I'm a Buckeye fan. He had a 21.37% market share of Ohio State's passing production, which is good considering he was running with the big dogs this year when they added Jackson Smith to Jigba sophomore season there because Smith to Jigba was blown up and then Garrett Wilson was also there. It's hard to really have a large ownership of the offense when all three wide receivers are doing well. Alave had a step back there, but he's been the guy in the offense for years. That's the thing you want to think about. And he's a crisp route runner. He can create separation, good short area quickness. This year had 2.29 yards per route run and averaged 4.2 yards after a catch per reception. Can catch the ball, has good hands, and has a good track record of success. Moving on to the 111, 11th player off the board. We're still in the first round here. And this pick was Kyron Williams. And this pick was made by Jax Falcone. Jax Falcon? Dino Game Theory off Twitter interacted with him a few times over the years. I like Kyron Williams. He blocks his face off. He's very aggressive in the passing game. Catches the ball well in the backfield. Very explosive in open space. And once he gets his opportunity... He has a good chance of taking the bull by the horns and showing off what he can do. That's something you want to bet on. He averaged 3.71 yards after contact per attempt this year and caught 42 balls for 359 yards. Has the receiving chops, has the explosiveness and overall skill set to be a threat to score a lot of fantasy points at the NFL level. And that's all we're asking for with these guys. Let's move on to the 12th pick. The 112th pick in this draft. Last player in the first round. And here we are drafting Matt Correll. Coral Kyle. And this pick was submitted by Zach Reed. Interacted with him over the years on Twitter too. He's a very good guy. But this is great value for him in a 2QB league. I've seen him go at the 101 spot. Top 5. Maybe 106, 107. He's all over the board. This year, Superflex has been weird. Quarterbacks have been going high. Quarterbacks have been going low. I've interacted with a lot of people. A lot of people are saying, hey, I'm staking the skilled players over quarterbacks this year. I interacted with other people, and they said, hey, I'm pounding quarterbacks at the top. So it's really cool to gauge the market like this. I kind of like my position here where I can just feel the market out and just go off of that. Mark Coral here, off of what I've seen, this is a very good value. Again, over 500 rushing yards in each of his last two seasons. Not a Konami code guy. Scrambler guy will get you those, but can also sling the rock. Can pass it downfield with some accuracy. He's aggressive with the ball. And overall, right now, he's pegged as the QB1, QB2 range in this draft. That's it for our first round. The first round is done. It is baked. It is cooked. Let's move on to the second round. Let's see what we got. Here we go. First pick in the second round. 13th player off the board. This pick was made by my buddy J. Mike. Check him out on Twitter. Willis had a big week at the Senior Bowl. He improved his stock by a lot. There's a good chance he could end up being the QB1 in this draft, the first quarterback selected. I wouldn't be surprised. His rushing ability was evident at the Senior Bowl. He had that one big run attempt in the game, but he also showcased that in practices all week. Also showcased his arm. His arm went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Carson Strong's that week, so that's a good thing to see. Again, he's a little rough around the edges. We know this from tape from over the years. So if he takes a step forward in his development, we got a top-tier fantasy asset for a very long time. And at this price tag, first pick in the second round, that's dirt cheap. I like Malik Willis, especially for a fantasy bet to, to make because the upside's so grand. I look at him as a, a Jalen Hurts type of quarterback where he may not be the NFL caliber quarterback that you're always looking for, but from a fantasy sense, he's going to get you a lot of QB1 weeks, especially if he's hitting, especially if he's in the right situation, especially if he's getting all the opportunities he needs to be able to develop and succeed. Moving on to the second pick of the second round, I think the 14th player off the board. This player we selected was Wandale Robinson, wide receiver from Kentucky. This pick was made by Felix Sharp at Sharp. Review. I like Wondell Robinson. I like him a lot. Had 1,342 yards this year, seven touchdowns. Broke out with two different collegiate programs. 
depending on how you look at the market share stats at Nebraska, year two there, age 19, 30.31% market share of the passing production. This guy can get downfield. He can separate. You can use him on the slot. You can use him on the outside a little bit. He's very diverse in the skill set. Average 3.56 yards per out run. I think Wandell Robinson is a player that if he goes in the right situation, gets the right looks, he can really succeed at the NFL level. Moving on to the 203 spot, I think 15th player off the board, and we finally hit on my boy, David Bell, wide receiver from Purdue. This pick was made by Michael at Analytix. 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 Anyway, 3.147% mark share produced passing production. Broke out at age 18. One of the few wide receivers in this class who broke out at age 18 as a freshman. I'm going to pound that into your guys' head. There's not many wide receivers in this class who has an age 18 breakout. David Bell has excelled all throughout his collegiate career. Freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. This year, he blew up in some big spots against Iowa, against Michigan State, when they were ranked highly in the rankings. I'm talking top three. And this guy, David Bell, will put the team on his back, make some big plays. He can separate. Look at the film reviews on my channel. We point that out. And that was in season this year before people were starting to say that this offseason because they don't know what to look at. But David Bell's a good pick here at the 203. Let's move on to the 204. I can't believe this guy fell this far. Tremendous value. But here we drafted Kenneth Walker. And this is made by my man, Kane Fossil. He's been on some shows with me before. I got to meet him in Canton. Very good guy. He does not like peanut butter, though. But send him some gifts of some guys covered in peanut butter. He'll love that. But Kenneth Walker was in talks for the Heisman this year. One of the most productive running backs in all of college football. He's very patient, has a good approach to the line of scrimmage. He's really being underrated when you compare him to the big three. Him, Spiller. Hall, we know he's going to get some draft capital. We know he's got enough buzz for that. Draft capital equals opportunity early on. Rushed for over 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns, and forced 89 missed tackles. This is a tremendous value here in the middle part of the second round. Moving on to the 205 spot. And here we drafted Desmond Ritter. This pick was made by Shane P. Hallam. Been interacting with him on Twitter for a long, long time. Pretty much a decade or so. Ritter, four great seasons in Cincinnati. 10,239 yards, 87 touchdowns on his career. He's mobile. He's probably going to get some decent draft capital. He may not be a first round pick. He may be in the back half of the first round pick. We will find out once the draft happens. However, quarterbacks, Matter and super flex, they hold their value for a little bit. Once you get to this part in the draft, they start to become big values. They start to become easy bets to make because once they get the chance to start at the NFL level and they start getting a few games under their belt, you can flip them pretty easy in fantasy. And it's different betting on a quarterback in the middle, late portion of the second round than it is in the first round because the risk is limited here. The risk is gone. I get it. He's not one of the favorite quarterbacks because the favorite quarterbacks are always going to be drafted in the first round or early part of the second. But here, you take stabs of the, the cheaper quarterbacks and you see if they hit. If they start to hit even just a little bit, it could be just like a Daniel Jones-like performance. And you might be able to, to cash out here with a return on the investment. So what you like about with Desmond Ritter. Plus, if he does hit and it's a QB1, high-end QB2, mid-round QB2, and Superflex, that holds a lot of value as well, and you did not pay much for it. Let's move on to the 206 here, and this was my pick. This is when I got the shine, and here I ran to the board, and I selected Carson Strong, and I went with the same philosophy that I was talking about with Desmond Ritter, that once you get to a certain part in the draft, and if there's quarterbacks there and super flex that are there with some decent draft capital, I like to select them. I like to select them, one, because they could experience a bump value, and two, they're a quarterback, and you're getting them for cheap at a part of the draft where if they bust... There's no loss. It's better to bust on the quarterback in that second round than it is in the first round. And then two, if they do hit, you got a major return on your investment. You got a player in a format 
that is going to hold a lot of value at 206. That, that is a good entry spot for a quarterback like this. Again, Carson Strong, strong arm that goes with his name. He's not very mobile, but he showed in Mobile at the Senior Bowl that he's able to manipulate the pocket a little bit, move up, and make the throws. So I like that. Is he going to be a first rounder? We don't know. He's forecasted there in a lot of mocks, so we just got to see. But I think he's still going to have decent draft capital. I still think he's going to eventually get the opportunity to succeed or fail. But that's all we're asking for. And at this price point, I think it's worth it. Moving on to the 207 range. I don't know what pick this is overall. Probably like 16th or something. We're in the middle part of the second round. Here we drafted Jahan Dotson. This pick was made by Travis May. Jahan Dotson pegged to go in the first round. Latter part, he was at the Senior Bowl. He was there like the first day, left early, but had a good season at Penn State. 1,182 yards, 12 touchdowns. He broke out at age 20 during his junior season last year with a 38.37% market share of their passing production. This year at a 35.89% market share. So he has been productive. The tape doesn't look bad. I like how he can extend out and make grabs. He has very sticky hands. He is also very quick and fluid, has good short area quickness, and the draft capital is being projected to be there. He's projected to go in the first round, maybe second round. He's kind of like a French player there. It looks like on the mock drafts from observing them, he's kind of all over the board. But again, at this part of the draft, there's really no, no loss here. Moving on to 2-8 spot here. Eighth player off the board in the second round. Here we are drafting Tyler Algier, running back from BYU. This pick was made by Curtis Patrick from Roto Viz. I like Algier. He is team thick. He is a big boy, rushed for over 1,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons to his name. He has shown that he can catch the ball in the backfield a little bit. 46 catches over the last two years. Not a tremendous stat line there, but he's done enough to prove himself. Average 4.16 yards after contact per attempt. I think his draft capital is going to be a little bit higher than what some people are projecting. I think he's going to move up in boards over the draft season. Now that we're past the Senior Bowl, people are going to start looking at him a little bit more. But I think Tyler Algier is a really good pick at this spot. I think he's going to be a good value. And I look for him to start creeping up boards here pretty soon. Let's move on to the 209 spot. And here we drafted John Mechie, wide receiver from Alabama. This pick was made by Dave Caban. Mechie, good route runner. He's been in the Alabama program his whole career. He's going to get the Alabama tax when it comes to his draft capital, which means teams are going to be willing to pay that. The media talks about him non-stop. This year, he had a 25.48% market share of Alabama's passing production, which is pretty good because that bakes in the injury. And then also, Jamison Williams was there balling out John Mechie, this late in the draft, is a good guy to bet on because you know he's going to get some kind of draft capital and you know he's going to get the opportunity to prove himself sometime during his career. Moving on to the 210 spot of this draft. Here we get to see Trey McBride, tight end from Colorado State, go off the board. This pick was made by Blair Andrews. Trey McBride, not just compared to tight ends, but also compared to two wide receivers, one of the best pass catchers in all of college football this year, had a 31.12% market share of his team's passing production. And not only that, he's been productive throughout his career at Colorado State. Mel Kuyper had him mocked in the first round, looked good at the Senior Bowl this week, ran good routes, had sticky hands, was body bodying up dudes. He's a receiving threat, and he has the potential to be a tight end one in fantasy, but pretty much all tight ends with draft capital these days are going to have that potential because tight ends are so crazy in fantasy. But I really like this pick, especially when you're looking for a tight end prospect for your rosters. Let's move on to the 211 pick here, and here we select the Rashad White running back from Arizona State. This pick was made by Devin McIntyre. Rashad White is pegged as one of the top receiving backs in this draft. He's also a very decisive runner. Rushed for 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns this year. 3.38 yards after contact per attempt. Also caught 43 balls. He's a dynamic, skilled player. We just got to see what the draft capital is going to be like for him. If he's a top 100 pick, it's wheels up. 
If he's a late round pick, skeptical hippo memes are going to be floating everywhere. But I like Rashad White, especially once Arizona State started letting him get the rock continuously. He started to prove himself, played well, and looked good. Moving on to the last pick of this two round Superflex draft, the two. 12. And this pick was made by Matt Wisp. He selected Brian Robinson, running back from Alabama. I think Brian Robinson is going to get higher draft capital than what a lot of people think. And I've been saying this on the channel for a while, like about a month or so. And the reason why I think that, and one, Alabama tax. Teams are willing to pay the Alabama tax, pay a little bit more for the Alabama players. Two, and we saw this at the Senior Bowl, and I've talked about this, is this guy blocks his face off. He whiffed on some blocks at the Senior Bowl, too. So you got to put that in account. But he's team thick, weighed in at 228 pounds, but has good wiggle for that size, good burst. A lot of people comment that the long speed's not there, but the long speed's not there for most of these runners in this class. And also, the long speed isn't there for most of the running backs in the NFL either. So you can peg that against him. You can peg that for him. Again, overall, he's a three down back. He can catch the ball a little bit out of the backfield. He can block a little bit. He can run between the tackles. He gives you a little bit of dynamic flow to your run game, and he can surprise you come draft day. But that's it for this two round super flex mock draft. Let me know what you think of these picks. Let me know who you think got snubbed. Who should have went in the second round? Who should have got bumped up in the first round? Who do you think should have fell? Who do you think got overdrafted? Let me know in the comments. I think I'm going to figure out how to run some mock drafts with the subscribers on this channel because you guys are deserving of that. We run some mock drafts. We run up some videos. We have a good time talk about these players, and that's all it's about, having fun, getting ready for these rookie drafts, having fun with our rookie drafts, and maybe we can win some money, but at least we're having fun doing it, doing something that we love. Again, I want to thank you for watching the show. Stick with me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out fuels me to keep putting out this content fuels me to keep digging up these mock drafts doing these mock drafts formulating mock drafts up in my head just giving you guys different looks because that's what we need right now just to have a good feel of the market a good feel of what our draft may look like five months from now but still it is very important to put in that type of work and I'm here to help you out. That's why you need to hit that subscribe button because I'm here on your side. I'm here to help you win your leagues. Again, I wanna thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.